It's a beautiful Wednesday morning here in Lagos. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the program. I am Nifemi Oguntoye. We're told that the wait is finally over. Uh, the race to the 2023 has also officially kick-started with a big announcement from former Lagos State Governor Ashwajibola Ahmed Tunubu saying that he's throwing his hat into the ring. As a matter of fact, uh, we saw the Ebony State Governor Dave Omai also following a stead, visiting the State House to intimate Mr. President of his intent to run. And we'll be talking about all of the reactions trailing this declaration, particularly as we count down to the big one in 2023. And I have just the right person to discuss that with me this morning. But we're going to begin with the very sad news that um, we had yesterday about the demise of an elder statesman and um, a former leader of our dear country, Chief Ernest Sonekon, who uh, you and I know the kind of contributions that he made to the development of Nigeria. And there's a lot of tributes um, pouring in for the elder statesman who led the interim national government um, that served as a transition between um, the military administration of Ibrahim Babangida and that of Sunny but of course the latter one was taken by force a lot of um, condolence messages are coming in mr president has referred to him as an internationally respected statesman with courageous wisdom former president goodluck jonathan uh, says that mr shonekon was a peacemaker and bridge builder who left enduring legacies and that's where we're beginning from this morning let me introduce my guest to you professor Tunde samuel is a pro chancellor federal university otoke in bielsa state uh, member governor's advisory council lagos uh, in 2014 he was lagos state delegate to the national confirm in 2016 he was winner african prize for leadership in education professor samuel thank you for joining us this morning thanks for having me and uh, happy new year to you same to you i'd like to also say very quickly congratulations on your award of the most notable and top distinguished education leader of the 21st century um, what a way to kick start the new year right thank you <laughs> <laughs> glad to have you here you. all right so let's begin with um the demise of um chief ernest shonekon his three months of leadership was um, short-lived, but we saw that he did quite a number of things and attempted a lot. How do you think he will be remembered in the history of this nation? Um, basically, he was a lover of peace. That's my own assessment of later in the mm. And uh, he, he did everything possible to ensure the survival of this nation at the most crucial time. And may his soul rest in perfect peace. Mm. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'd like to ask you if you think that um, we're doing enough to make from the experiences of the past, particularly the leadership crop that we had in the Third Republic. I know that there is a Council of State that serves as an adversary organ to the administration. But do you think that we are, we are taking good advantage of these individuals before they leave us? Hmm. Uh, I will not say we are. But whatever we want to do has to do with the political structure on ground. Hmm. Um, well, there's no way we want to operate through federalism. which ipso facto stipulates mm. that the, this country will be run on two pillars. Mm. The melting pot and the salad bowl. The melting pot stipulates that all the 36 states of the Federation and the 700 plus local government councils will surrender their sovereignty to have what we call unity in diversity. So, Nigeria belongs, both in theory and practice, belongs to the 36 states and over 774 local government councils. The federal government has no territory. 
the states make the federal government. The local government makes the federal government. So whatever system we are going to run, we must have that behind the wall of our hearts. Mm. That you cannot have unity in diversity without diversity in unity again. That's why you have the, the melting pot, uh, and the salad bowl. Mm. The salad bowl stipulates that all of us will dip our hands into the salad bowl, which is your federation account now, subject to what you have contributed into the salad bowl. And, uh, there, there's no way, there's no way in, the, in the theory of federalism which says, by law, we should be a brother's keeper. Because all the 36 states should develop at their own pace, mm. not, uh, not an imposed pace for the, the 36 states to follow. Mm -mm -mm -mm. If you, if you look at the United States of America, you understand what I'm saying. The development of the, of the state of Chicago is not the same thing as the, the state of Mississippi. That is true federalism. Federalism by excellence. Each of the states will develop at its own pace. So that is, that is the beginning. What, whatever is not within the political setup, we cannot bring it in easily. Um, I'm sure that these are uh, some of the issues that were raised at the 2014 National Confab, yeah. that where you were a legal state delegate. Um, there are concerns about um, how much of, of the resolutions made there that have been implemented. But as we begin to wrap up on um, um, Chief Shonekon's story this morning, we are told that um, he was in office for just about three months, but was able to release um, political prisoners detained by mm. uh, former military uh, um, um, leader Babangida and repeal three major draconian decrees of the military, um, the military government. What do you think? What does that say about this person? You know how important a role you think he played, particularly um, in the history of our dear country. Um, military rule has polluted constitutional democracy. Take it or leave it. So whatever we are going to say about any regime, we cannot separate military rule. Because constitutional democracy and military rule, they cannot be seen to be the same thing. And that was why people have referred to military, people have said that the worst military, the worst democratic rule it's better, it's than, better than the best military administration. Is it the same interpretation when you consider it economically? Because Nigerians would say that it matters these days if you are able to have three square meal, mm. whether it is democratic or military. <laughs> <laughs> what, 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 in, what in, in the recess are we, are I, are we pointing out on? Mm. What are we saying? Three square meal is better than constitutional democracy? Is that what who some people are saying? I don't get it. I'm just saying that attention is drawn to the economic realities on the democratic rule. Mm -hmm. And for many Nigerians, that's how they measure whether or not the government is doing well or not. <laughs> <laughs> By having to this means a day. By being able to afford the, you know, basic amenities. No, it's, and, it's, it's just and, part of it. Mm. it it's, not, it's, it's not all in all. It's part of it because it is when people are happy that they will accept the legitimacy of any administration. Mm -hmm. No matter how good you are, once the populace is not happy, you will not be able to convince anybody. Absolutely. All right. L let's um, just uh, move ahead and uh, begin to look at other developing stories this morning that we're looking forward to explore in the course of this program. Um, we, we definitely will continue our coverage of reactions as it trails the demise of um, Chief Ernest Shulekon from lobbying for debt cancellation for Nigeria while he was in office to becoming 
the founder of the Nigerian Economic Summit Group, uh, that's in 1994. Uh, he had a tremendous interest in the country's economy, and of course, um, he will be sorely missed. But let's turn our attention to what appears to be um, the commencement of the active political life ahead 2023 with the um, declaration for, of intent that we saw at the State House a few days ago. I'd like us to begin from how important you think the 2023 general election is going to be um, relative to the previous elections we've had since 1999. It's been an unbroken democratic rule for over 20 years. How important, how significant do you think the presidential election next year is for Nigeria's history? Uh, in the last 40 hours, Nigeria has entered a period of high wire political engineering hmm. on the 25th, 2023. We've started high wire political engineering in the last 24 hours. And that is how it will go until the general election in 2023. Hmm. That's the way I will see it. High wire political engineering is not going to be an easy thing. Hmm. It, will, it, so, it will determine so many things. 2023 will determine so many things in the life of Nigeria. So we have to be very careful. You know, uh, the conversation has been on as we get um, getting um, a round peg in a round hole, that if we can get it right in the area of leadership, getting the best of us to lead us, then we perhaps are going to fast track not only the development of our nation, but also of our people. Do you subscribe to that school of thought? Absolutely. Um, because once you don't, once you miss the point via your leadership recruitment drive, you've missed everything. Yeah. I'll give you an example. Lagos State. Um, leadership succession, right from Ashiwa Ajibola Amet Inumbo, Fashola, Ambode, Jide Sanwolu. Hmm. These are well-crafted Democrats. Take it or leave it. And the essence is to sustain the political heritage that will pay legal state in the next 25, 50 years. Yeah. So, that's the essence of the question you have just asked me now. Once we don't get the leadership question right, we can't get anything right. You know, a lot of that responsibility uh, lies on the shoulder of the political party, or let me say the political organization or system that we run. For instance, the Electoral Act Amendment Bill is now being debated because of the controversial clause that has to do with the mode and the system with which candidates emerge from parties. Mm -hmm. The president is saying, don't limit it to direct. Let us have indirect, let us have a situation where a, you know, a candidate can arise from a consensus arrangement. Uh, you, you were active with the formation of the APC. How do you think that over the years, this um, selection process has evolved in such a way that we have the best of these aspirants emerging as candidates? Uh, I have said this on set here several times, and I'm repeating myself for the opt-in time. President Buhari, as one of the few 25 institutional leaders in the world, yeah. must, whatever decision he, he, he has to take in life, he must be guided by institutional logic. As a institutional leader, that's a major characteristic of all institutional leaders all over the world. No amount of intimidation. and make him change his mind on critical national issues once he has been guided by situational logic. How do you mean? Okay. Um, if you look at the amendment of the Electoral Act, 
his own thesis for not signing some aspect is very clear. People who are to elect their representatives must decide so many things. If you look at his angle of reason now, the National Assembly is equally elected by electorates. In line with the logic of situational leadership style, once he has a problem confronting him, he will go for intelligence, number one. After intelligence gathering, he will move the think tank to come and sit and peruse the quantum and quality of intelligence. It's not, this, this situational leaders cannot be stampeded anywhere in the world. No amount of organized noise making. It won't work. Mm. Except you understand his leadership prototype. You will, you will start thinking that his attitude towards governance is unusual. Mm. <laughs> it is not. But well, when you say that is a situational leader, yes. um, you know, you also want to think back to 2015 and think about the mode of election within his party that favored his emergence mm. as a candidate of the new political party at that time, yeah. the All Progressives Congress. And that is what um, many of his um, critics are, are, are using as their you know, main point today, saying that why kill direct primary if you are a beneficiary of it? <laughs> I don't think is trying to kill direct primary. Uh, you look at the materiality of the argument now and compare it to 2015. We are concerned with the materiality of the argument now. I was saying that the materiality of the argument in the electoral act now is the same as in 2015. Yeah. The logic has been, has been tainted already. And he has identified the, the tainted logic. So that, uh, that's why I said initially, he will, he, will, he, first, he will first of all go for intelligence. That's number one hallmark of a situational leader. Because the law of semantic empiricism says what cannot be seen must not be said either. Yeah. He cannot go out and be talking to the world on something he cannot define. Logically. The, the, the variability theory of meaning. Whatever you are saying is, also, is only logical if and only if it is verifiable. This, it, these are the angles Mr. President is coming from now. Yeah. And he has given reasons as to why he, he has suspended uh, his uh, acceptance of the electoral act. All right. So um, and he's also added that um, if lawmakers are going to take that clause out and retransmit it to him, he's willing to sign. But what we've seen played out in the past two days, uh, successive two aspirants who have been to the State House to show their interest, began with the Ashuaju and then followed by the Abonyu State Governor. A lot of questions have been asked about the role that Mr. President must begin to play now, both for his party and the success of his succession, you know, ahead of 2023 general elections. Uh, the biggest concern as we speak is that of the APC National Convention, which uh, is still hanging somewhere. But let's begin with um, the open declaration of Ashiwaja's intent to run. You worked with him, I believe, as a special advisor on education yeah. while he was um, state yes. governor. When you heard him talk about a kingmaker 
becoming a king and having a life ambition to lead Nigeria as its next president. What was the first thing that came to your mind, given you know, the relationship that you've had with him as a governor? Uh, I, I talk about Ashura Jibola Metinumbo any day based on the materiality of his person. I don't go out of, of the materiality of his person. The, he surrender value as a political hero. I made this clear yesterday. Mm. 28. Mm. That the, the issue on ground now is not whether it, 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 we, we, are, we are faced with one option. Are we ready to consolidate as a party the achievements of President Buhari after 2023? 20, yes or no? That's, that's what should concern us when we get to, to talk to ourselves. Number two, whoever want to be president must bring out the fundamental trading ratios he wants to talk about. On the basis of the trading ratios that is enunciating to the electorate, they will weigh them mm. on individual merit. Okay. Then we will go further to see how many of them have been tested and trusted? Because 2023 is not for a la carte. It's a big year in the annals of Nigerian political history. It will determine so many things we are not looking at now. All right. Let me hold you for a minute, Professor. You mentioned about the need to consolidate on the president's achievement. I'll return to you in the course of this conversation to find out how laudable you think the outgoing president's achievements really are in, in, the, in the past seven years thereabout. But we have joining us uh, via Zoom, Comrade Abubakar Abdullahi Kuso, who is uh, of the Bola Tinubu Support Organization. Comrade Kuso, thank you for joining us on the program. Uh, how do you uh, assess, you know, what's your honest review of um, the reaction to Ashuaju's open declaration a few days ago, particularly in northern Nigeria? What's the feeler amongst uh, the people there, uh, political stakeholders? Let's begin with that. So, sincerely speaking, uh, We've been in a jubilation mood uh, since uh, His Excellency Asua Jubola Bertinubu declared his intention because it has been uh, the news we've been, the breaking news we've been waiting for him to declare. So, sincerely speaking, we've been so happy because we've been in this project for the past two years because we felt uh, Asua Jubola Bertinubu is someone that had the capacity and the leadership charisma to continue for the good work uh, President Muhammadu Buhari is doing. Uh, we are ready, as you can see, you know, all the other states are picking up. A lot of political groups have swung up uh, to ensure that uh, we continue consulting, as he said, with uh, the masses and selling his candidature uh, to the masses. We've seen what he has done in Lagos. If he can turn the fortune of Lagos, I will believe he can do it in Nigeria. So I'm assuring you, uh, the ball has been set rolling, and a lot of people have uh, accepted uh, his open declaration, not minding the fact that he said he has notified Mr. President, but yet to notify Nigerians. We've uh, accepted that as a declaration, and it's a good news for us. And uh, by the special grace of God, who we'll make sure we can pay for him to ensure uh, he cleaned the ticket and uh, the primary. It's God really. 
where are we, comrade, um, in the ongoing zoning conversation? In the uh, preceding year, we had that conversation on rotation of presidency. And um, mm -hmm. the, the call was loud as regards the presidency returning to the South after uh, the Buhari's eight-year administration. What do you think we are as regards that, particularly amongst stakeholders in northern Nigeria? You know, we in northern Nigeria, we believe uh, in the unity of Nigeria. And uh, we know zoning is a gentleman agreement, not in the constitution of uh, all the parties. But we believe uh, our leader, President Muhammadu Buhari, will uh, make sure the right thing is done. And uh, we're assuring you, we're assuring Nigeria that we all believe uh, and agreed that power should be rotated to the south once President Muhammad Obari finishes his eight years uh, come 2023. You were talking about um, how important the 2023 general election is in Nigeria's history. I'd like you to also react to uh, some of some of the opinion that would you know favor a younger person as president. H how important is that? You know. I like the conversation we're having now. It's more or less like an intergenerational conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm the younger fellow. I mean, the people in my age bracket will say, we need the energy of the young. And then, you know, perhaps um, the elderly can speak to us and advise. <laughs> How do you react to that in this regard? Mm. I, I want to first and foremost corroborate what the comrade mm. said earlier on with particular reference to Ashwa Jibola Ahmed Numbu. During his second term as governor, the amalgamated youth in the 19 northern states gave him an award titled the Lion Heart of the Fourth Republic. I was privileged to collect the award at the Amdala Hotel at Kaduna with the entire political giants and legal luminaries in the North that day. But I was not looking at the symbolism that day until 2015 and 2019. The symbolism dawned on me in 2015 and 19. What the Arewa Consultative Union did during his second time, time in office. Anytime I want to address Ashwaju since 2005, I call him the Lion Heart, sir. It was in 2015 and 19 that it dawned on me had this had a white consultative union of a people. They were looking ahead. In 2005, nobody ever thought President Buhari will come forward again in 2015 and 2019. Mm -hmm. huh. So any time the Arewa Consultative Youth Forum wants to talk to me, I always, I always give them that respect. Because that award was as confirmed as she was just rating in 2015 and 2019. Mm. She said it, only the deep can come to the deep. Mm. If you don't have anything here, you don't talk. Let me hold you for a minute to take uh, Mazi Okorafo's call from Arochuku in Abia State. Good morning, Mazi. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Prof. Good morning. How are you, sir? Prof, it's a pleasure seeing you on the call. When Prof is talking, we know that we are coming to analyze history that has to win the Nigerian <laughs> politics, <laughs> name them historically, juridically, politically, name them. Now, Prof, I want to find out from you. And you have seen what is happening now presently in Nigeria. That's Many Nigerians, they don't remember history. What do you think? 
Thank you. Studio like if there is sitting sitting there now, we have seen one uh, one advance job person. To recall past events of uh, the Jagaba and Tunubu, so that people who are short of now we come back home. A little act people are talking about is still shaking. What is the guarantee that the National Assembly are coming back next week? Tuesday, 18th of uh, January 2022, to resume work. Are we sure they will facilitate things? So that before one year to come out, when the selection will come out, you know, that they will vote for the Chagaba and the Tunu because they have a record already, already made ground. It's for us to do what? To back it up. But the question now is this is the electoral act coming on board or not? Thank you very much. But it's a pleasure to have that this when, when you are talking history is moving on in this country. Well, for our brother, I, I, I want that to tell President uh, to become a student in peace. But he left the legacy for, for that to say, we don't want anything military, military. Although military in Mali, they are doing, they are doing one kind of good talk out. But people are saying military goals. So that people are saying military goals. We want civilian, civilian, civilian democracy. Have a nice day. Thank you, Mazi, for your contribution. You want to quickly react to that? <laughs> uh, the, well, the most important thing I would like to say to that is that history will not allow us to do the wrong thing. Mm -hmm. What I mean by that? The concept of true federalism has made it totally difficult for any geopolitical zone in this country to monopolize power. It will never work. Yeah. It's not going to be possible for any geopolitical zone to clinch the presidency without the support of others. Absolutely. That's the beauty of our concept of through federalism. Yeah. And I'm extremely very happy. And that was why I said earlier on that we should be, be very careful mm. in 2023. All right, Prof. Judge has called in from Ikeja. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, uh, and uh, happy New Year to Prof. Sir. Good afternoon. Uh, I've been following uh, Ashwajo Tinubu for about 30 years now. When, I mean, you know, uh, Chief of Akhenia Wolowo brought education to the Midwest. And today, if, if you are looking for the best educated people in Nigeria, you find them in the Southwest. Ever since after Awolowo, Tinubu is the only person that has come up to consolidate on that education that our work got here. If you if you go around the whole of the southwest, he brought leadership to the whole of the of the region. You can see a, a state that is being governed from the governor to commissioner to legislators. They are all these products. You go to uh, departments of uh, you know any economic uh, industry, all the states of the national life in this region is populated by the people that went through this tutelage. And if you also go through the record that he created as a governor in Lagos State, he is a peace fetcher. There is basically no state in this country that has not come to learn something from Lagos from the legacies they would left behind. And then the APC state that came on board. He's the author. He's the one that brought Mr. President to power, definitely. So the, the, his capacity is not in doubt at all. But what worries me is the way his party men, in fact, uh, some members of his party have been trying to sideline him after the work he, he did for the party that ensures the emergence of uh, uh, President Wari. My worry now is, he has made his intention known. If you have, I told you I've been following him for 30 years. 
They have been preparing for this job for mm -hmm. more than three decades. All right, Judge. And it's called coverage. Mm. But we need the support of Mr. President. That's my worry. Thank you for your contribution. Let's get back to uh, Comrade very quickly. You heard the Prof talked about how um, united the nation becomes, you know, during election, the fact that a geopolitical zone cannot win without the support of yet another. Northern Nigeria, for instance, has been the beautiful bride in all of the presidential elections we've had since 2003. But walk us through uh, some of the reactions that is trailing um, Ashwaju's open declaration. The Ohani Zeindigbo, for instance, are of the opinion that his intention to run is not based on the foundation of fairness and equity. The reason is that we've had a president from the southwest, another from the south south, and then in their opinion, the southeast should be next. How is your group responding to this? You know, uh Ohaneze uh, entitled their own opinion, but we felt once we said zoning, it is a zoning between the north and the south. Okay, it has we yearn for power to shift to the south, and we felt uh, Asiwaju Amebola Tinubu is the right person to take over from Muhammad Buhari. We should put into consideration of the fact that the PDP are looking at this unfold in APC. So we felt the rightful candidate, the most qualified candidate to fly our ticket is Asuaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Because we've looked at his contribution to the coming of the present government. We realize that uh, Nigeria today, Nigerian political <coughs> the North cannot do without the South. And the South cannot do without the North. If you look at uh, it, will not have been easy to defeat an incumbent government. The powerful and the strongest party there in Africa <coughs> to be defeated. But by the effort of Asuaju Bola Hamed Tinubu to agree for the merger, it's something that is. Uh, what recommending he has paid his due so we felt at this point in time it is time for us to support him when the issue of uh, merger was coming it was a combination of different parties but we look at the role in which southwest played in the coming of this government so we felt the southwest should be given the opportunity of presenting the, the, the next president after president Muhammad Dubai. So we felt uh, fielding Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu will give us the edge, the advantage to retain power come 2023. So we are pleading with other, uh, the Southeast and the South South, to throw their support <laughs> to Aswaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Politics today is all about number. We know the amount of vote coming out from the Southwest, and we know the amount of uh, vote coming out from Southeast and South South. So for us to get that bulk vote, we felt Asuajubola Ahmed Tinibu should be given the opportunity, the Yoruba should be given the opportunity to be the next president after President Mohammed Obama. We have a call out from. Everybody is entitled to opinion. I'll be back with you shortly. We have a call out from Joss. Alaji Sonny. Good morning. Yeah. I'm still on. Please go ahead. You're live now. Hello. You have to turn down the volume of your TV set. Okay. Hello. Go ahead. Hello. Hello. I'm Alaji Sonny from Joss. Go ahead yes, with I want to make a, yes, I want to make my contribution on uh, our incoming president, we, the president and the waiting. But, but I will uh, just uh, advise uh, Mr. Tinumbu. Yes, I would like to 
Right. I'm afraid we can't go on with that call. You have to turn down the volume of your TV set uh, completely before uh, putting a call through to the studio. Comrade, very quickly, how are you reacting to what appears to be um, foot dragging on the part of your party in line with its national convention? <laughs> Comrade Crusoe, are you still there? We'll probably we'll get back to him in the course of this conversation. Prof, uh, it's important that we begin to also look beyond um, what we can see now. Um, many people are concerned about having an upgraded version of the Electoral uh, Act to be able to, you know, have an election in 2023 that will be a better version of what we've had in, you know, in previous times. But how do we ensure that we get more Nigerians involved in the electoral process? Because unfortunately, in previous elections, not even up to 50% of the Nigerian, you, you know, voting population have participated in, in this process. That simply means the electoral process has been faulty. Yeah. And to continue to discuss it, we may end up illegalizing a legalized process. Yeah. So I want us to avoid that as much as possible. However, um, the party is founded on justice, equity, and fair play. Very important. Therefore, if we are running to constitutional democracy, everybody should have a say. But that hasn't been the situation. The last election we had in Anambra, less than 10% of those who registered to vote actually came out. And sometimes you wonder the legitimacy or the validation of the process when you're getting just a mere fraction of the population deciding who leads. We have to lay the blame on the, our doorsteps, you and I. I'm talking of the elites now. Majority of the votes you have just quoted did not come from the elites. Yeah. Artisans, market women, down food drivers, name it. Perhaps we also have to, you know, improve um, the system such that the elite can have confidence in it. Uh, many people will tell you it doesn't matter whether I vote or not. Ah, it, 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 <laughs> it goes the way it is supposed to go, but. I'll be back with that. So Bera has called in from Alimosha. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Happy New Year, sir. Happy New Year to you. Thank you very much. Uh, please, I want uh, the, 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 the declaration of uh, Bola Mechinubu is a welcome idea. I uh, the, uh, the Jacoban has the ability, the capacity to, 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 to handle this country. Well, no doubt about that. We have seen a lot of what he has done, especially in Liberal State, and how he unites most of this, you know, the sector in Nigeria. But by and that, I want to, 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 to emphasize more on this our amalgamation. Our forefathers that agreed on this amalgamation talk about true federalism. Everybody to develop on his own space. I think that is the major program that is, you know, join Nigeria back. Unity of Nigeria is key. But our forefathers agreed on regionalization. Everybody to move ahead within on his own space. So the kind of government we are, we are running now is giving a lot of trouble, problem to Nigerians. So fourth, I want you to emphasize much on this our amalgamation, which is causing a lot of setback to most of the region. Have a nice day. I welcome the idea of uh, 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 the former uh, negotiator governor, 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 govern
Thank you, Sabir, for your contribution from Ali Mosha. He's saying that sometimes we just get lost in the euphoria of election period that we don't talk about the issues. For instance, it was after the election of President Buhari that we were now asking, did he support restructuring in the first place? What was his stance on many of these fundamental issues? Do you think that we have enough time to carry on this conversation before giving the mandate to another person? Yeah, well, <coughs> even if we have the time, it may not fly. Why? Um, I was part of the team at the National Confab in mm. 2014 that disagreed vehemently mm. that one we cannot have 56 states in Nigeria. Mm. Myself and all the radical lawyers within at the confab. We, we are here to perfect 36 states. And you are talking of 50 something. Mm. Is, that, is, that the canal of, is that the canal of our, our um, coming to the national conference? That's not the kind here. Mm. Number two, uh, the concept of federalism, unless we are ready to run through federalism, we are not running through federalism as I'm talking now. Mm. Like the last speaker has said, if we are running through federalism, every state will develop at its own pace. For God's sake, and I've given you examples in the United States of America. Illinois will never grow the same way Chicago will. They have their political and constitutional peculiarities. Are these not issues that should guide who Nigerians vote for, you know, find out if aspirants, you know, would want to tow this path if they're elected president? Ah, uh, no, no. It, that's going to be difficult for the electorate. Mm. You see, because when I said in my introduction that we are now moving into a period of high-wire political engineering, you should understand what I mean. We are going to have plenty of political shenanigans. Mm. We are going to have a lot of uh, political insincerity within the rank and file. I get your point, Prof. Let me take Ibrahim's call from Akute. Ibrahim, you have just one minute. Go ahead. Good uh, morning, Mr. Nguyen. I'm Professor Thank you. Really? About the declaration of Kosei uh, Mani as well as you, well, I'm you know, if we look at it from the uh, year uh, 1999, look at the number of uh, institutions as well as you have created in the Gulf State. That is what exactly makes it, just uh, to make the Gulf State be number one in Africa. Now, let's now choose this man as the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Because I got to know that the problem or the challenges we have, we are facing in Nigeria now, is all our institutions are not are very funny. But if the human government can do call in, right? Those are the institutions that I know that Bola Ahmed I mean, Kosei Mani, you will call. Oh, so right. we move on. I think this man deserves. I mean, Kosei Mani deserves. I, I think your point is very clear, Ibrahim. Thank you for your contribution. We're going now. Uh, comrade, you ha we have just about one more minute. Let me take your final thoughts on this issue. Comrade Kuso, can you hear me? I'm asking for your final thoughts on this issue in just about one minute. Uh, 
I would love to advise Nigeria uh, that we should look at Asuaju's presidency. We should look at it as if we are doing favor to Asuaju Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Mm -hmm. I want us to look at it uh, as if we are doing favor to ourselves by giving him our mandate to support him to become Nigerian president because we look at Asuaju as an institution. A lot of people have passed through that institution. And that is the kind of person we want as our president come 2023 to take over from President Muhammad Dubari to continue with the good work President Muhammad Dubari is doing. So we should look at it as we are doing favor to ourselves. All right. For the first time. It's time to go, comrade. Thank you so much for your contribution, comrade Abubakar Abdullah Kuso is the bola is of the Bola Tinubu Support Organization. Thank you for sharing your thoughts with us on the program this morning. And I've also been speaking with Professor Tunde Sama, who's, a, who's the Pro Chancellor of Federal University Utoke in Bayelsa State, member Governor's Advisory Council, Lagos, a Lagos State Delegate uh, to the 2014 National Confab, and who was a 2016 winner African Prize for Leadership in Education. Professor, it's always a pleasure to have you, Thank you. on the program. That's our show today. Thanks for being a part of it. We'll see you again tomorrow. I am Nifem Yukuto. Good morning.